All I can tell you is we failed. Uh Welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we're gonna spend a lot of time underneath here on our Fall Guy replica jump truck, looking for the source of our oil leaks. And it's at a pretty high volume to the extent that I'm sincerely concerned that we could pump the fluid out of the transmission before we make it up the cliff and jump this thing off. So come along as we take a look and see. Transmission out of here so I can get to the front pump seal. Whew. Gotta kinda go from there. Let me take it underneath here and show you the leaks. What I wanna do is get this inspection cover off here and maybe climb up there, start it, run it, look to see what kind of oil I've got coming down. I am just gonna let it run here a little bit. Let it uh, warm up. All right, we are dripping fluid right now. Pretty steady. I think this tells us that I think that front seal look at that's just coming out coming out so yeah that is a bad leak bad bad leak let's go ahead and take this out now a quick update got the front drive shaft loose got the skid plate off drive shaft in the rear is out I've removed, there's a support bar that goes from the transfer case up to the bell housing. That's off. Shifter linkage over here is off. Torque converter bolts are out. Hey, we had some pretty good luck. Got two of these out. That one's already broken. And over here, one broke. The other two came out. I'm going to sawzall this thing right here. Okay, plenty of extra room to get to things now. So what you want when you're doing these is a wobble or a, just a, an extension that's got the swivel in it. And then now you lose torque. You lose torque over distance. I have a feeling yeah, these aren't too tight. It is day two of trying to get the transmission seal changed in this thing. And um, hopefully not going to work extra trying to work less. But I think what I want to do is try to take advantage of my, my lift jack. Now it doesn't, it's not on wheels where it moves real easy. It kind of digs in when you put it in a certain spot. We will need to move this back just ever so slightly to clear the transmission. The balance point is going to be somewhere near the cross member. So if I can, if I can block this up higher, kind of set it in here and maybe use some ratchet straps, that might give me an advantage where I can just kind of and then get up here and do, do what I got to do. Hey, I want you to stand clear because it's acting front heavy. That's it. Why is that important? Because you want to know when you want to know when the converter is fully seated in the pump. So let's make make some space here. Pop that Gucci. Pop, pop, pop that Gucci. If I learn anything from Two Live Crew, I learned the radio edit of that song. Pop that Gucci. There's another word they say. Pop 
that coochie. She's wet. <laughs> Stop. What? For all that is good in this world. Stop. She is. She's wet. Totally. I got it looped up. Now. Fluid leak out of this thing that we're trying to solve is, is just massive and defies logic from what I was expecting. I went down and picked up a new seal. The seal simply goes in here like so, and then everything goes together. But the, the rate of fluid and stuff that's been leaking doesn't explain the condition of the seal that I saw coming out. And this transmission looks like it was rebuilt, refurbished, probably not too many miles ago, many, many years ago, but not too many miles ago. So the, this is the torque converter here, and this is the part of the shaft that goes in and engages the pump inside the transmission. And you know, and the seal rides on this, so easy peasy. All right, so I'm getting ready to put my seal in here today, and uh, I get looking, and I notice something's missing. Something's not in there. It's just not there. Like, what am I looking at here that just doesn't seem right? Well, it's the bushing. It's the bushing. So I was doing some research and a lot of people were saying that the reason why the front seals leak in the first place is that the bushing wears out, you can change the seal, but the converter's gonna wobble around and, and it's gonna leak, okay? I really didn't wanna get into changing the bushing because you gotta pull all this out, separate the pump. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's a couple more hours work and gaskets and parts and I was just hoping to put a seal in and be done with it. But guess what? There's no bushing at all. Just it isn't there. So um, the good news is we're gonna solve this leaky transmission that whoever owned this truck before was probably fighting with like crazy. The bad news is I'm gonna try to figure out how to put this in from the outside in. Normally you drive them in from the other side and it's gonna add some complexity to it. But I picked up two of them just in case so that I would be able to maybe mess one up and try again or use the other one to kind of help center it. But that's it. That's going to solve our problem. And I just need to roll up my sleeves now and get in here and get this done. I found the tool. Uh, this is the General Motors PVC J0912, something like that. Um, it's actually just a piece of PVC pipe. I think this is what, inch and a half. And I've got a fitting here that's threaded, but this thing fits on there just like boom, like that. So I think that's gonna help me to get over this and put it in. I've got, thank you, Kurt Anderson. I believe I still have this left over from when you and I did some transmission work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You don't wanna put like regular old axle grease up in your, your transmission. This stuff I think will dissolve and whatnot when it's warm and I don't think it'll harm any of the inner workings of things. So we got a little, little grease ring on there. Go. And we're gonna call that in. So, and I'm being called in for dinner. They'll never call me late for dinner. Right? Okay. I think I'm gonna go with that. See you in a minute. All right, I got the seal and I've got another Generous Motors installation tool. Um, this thing, you know, looks as good as it's gonna look. You're really not supposed to put any sealant on these. Um, if you do put sealant, yeah, you know, you're not supposed to, but I like to usually put a little bit around real thin, thin layer just because I don't know there's something about there's something about just having sort of that paint on there it doesn't feel right to me seals in yeah where we're going that's gonna hold and another General Motors tool, we'll just set that aside. Oh, as you saw earlier, I had the, I measured three quarters of an inch back. So what we're looking for now, 
for this to totally seat in. There that is. And then I'd put the straight edge across. That's it. It's in the right spot. That's it. So our problem is now solved. Just have to put it all back together. And uh, yeah, you just gotta put it back together. All right, so here we go. We've got the exhaust dropped out, shortened up to that wee little bitty pipe right there because we wanna let this thing roar wherever it goes. Uh, transfer case is packed in tight. She's in good shape right here. We have front drive shaft, rear drive shaft. We have the cooler lines. We have dipstick tube. We have all of the brackets and everything that go along there. Everything up here is tightened back up. Torque converters bolted to the flex plate inspection cover. Inspection cover is on. Yeah, that is how it looks for now. For a few hours worth of work and a homemade tool or two, we got that transmission back in place. Just a goodness, what a cool mystery to solve, finding that missing bushing in that pump housing. I have no reason to believe this isn't gonna go now. We're ready to Ready to let her roar, but I'm done for the night. I'll clean up a little bit the next time I come out here. We'll head on top, put the fluids in, put the cable on, crank it up, cross our fingers. It's going to be nice and dry down there. All right, see you guys next time. Well, I'm not exactly sure where to, where to begin this video or end this video or midway roll this video. All I can tell you is we failed. Um, been working on this pretty hard this last week, figured out some pretty ingenious ways to get the transmission up and away from the flex plate so that I could deal with the front seal. That's when we found out that it was missing the front bushing in the pump altogether and got that replaced and, or shall I say, got, got one inserted put a new seal in it, put this back together, and it is blowing fluid like a monkey. I mean, just, it just poured everywhere. And I'm so incredibly disappointed. I don't have any idea what it could be. We're gonna find out somehow before this is over with, but there's, you know, maybe the pump itself is spraying out, but it's wet. It's wet all up inside there. Okay, so I have removed the transmission for the second time because of massive spewing fluid leak. That's after we found out it was missing the bushing. And of course I put a new front seal in it. And I'm sitting here messing around with it. And if you watch, you can start seeing that filling up with fluid just with gravity. So the transmission, the, the torque converter is actually cracked right here. It's bubbling out. Honest to God, I would have never, ever, ever, ever expected that to be my, my problem. And generate some pressure pushing on the bulb. Watch it, watch it filling up with fluid. Just pushing on this like a pump. That's why we are exploding with fluid in here like a bomb whenever it runs. And so here's my theory. My theory is that the bushing that was missing generated a, you know, wobbly wobbly in there that between the flex plate flexing, they call it a flex plate for a reason, between the flex plate flexing, this thing being full of fluid, these things do move 
without the bushing really keeping the shaft centered, maybe the kind of bending the paper clip effect here, but there's your problem. Cracked torque converter. There's a little weld that goes through here, so something something gave way. So my guess is whoever put the pump in left the bushing out. The bushing allowed this to have excessive play. The excessive play probably, number one, this thing probably leaked a little bit steady because there was no bushing to begin with. Number two, it continued to operate this way until it completely broke that apart. And that's what made me so curious when I looked in here. These parts look fresh now fresh by mileage not fresh by years because we know this truck is sitting i initially reported to you that it was maybe 18 months or so but as i'm learning more about the truck five or six years or so it's been inoperative all right well now it's time to get on the phone check around and see what we can do this truck is not going to go off the cliff or sit in a parking lot and idle or get on and off my trailer until i solve that well this is a big day we are Headed over to Porks Torx off Lucille here uh, on, in Wasilla. Gonna come over and pick up the freshly rebuilt, reconfigured torque converter for the Fall Guy jump truck. I don't yet know what exactly failed in it. We do know it was cracked and leaking. I understand there may have been some other things that weren't working. So. We're gonna drop right on here, and let me tell you something. There is a gold bind of old General Motors 80s and 90s machines sitting over there. But this is Porks Torx and Tranny Parts. Come on in here, and maybe we'll get lucky and get a tour and learn a little bit more about what they do and learn a little bit more about what went wrong with our jump truck torque converter after clearly somebody installed it without the bushing and I think that just uh, caused everything to go completely and totally downhill from there. So let's go on in and check them out. Hey, let's head on in here to Ports Torx and check out our converter. Hey Dalton. How do you do? All right. All right. You got my torque converter ready, right? Yep. This is our, our this is our fall guy. I love this. This is our fall guy C9 converter It had some issues, right? Yes, it did. All right So Dalton's gonna take us in the back in a bit and give us a tour of The shop and he's gonna show us a little bit more about what happened here, but this so this is not This is other parts. This isn't what I brought here. Oh, no, this is a whole different converter whole different much. converter Okay, all right, and it's kind of semi heavy duty, right? Yep. So we'll look at what that means a little bit later when we look inside what you got in the shop. But looks, I mean, it's brand new, right? I mean, it looks brand new. Yep. And this is where we had that crack failure before, and I thought that was all my issue. It turned out a little bit more than that, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Had a lot more in that out that. Yeah, this is super cool. The good thing is it's here now. It's looking good, and it's about to be on the road. Okay. All right. So this is the spot where it cut. Uh, this is our lathe. So this this is the unit that cuts the torque converter apart? Yes. Okay, that's a heck of a machine. It is. Okay, so pretty much, if I wanted to like, cut open your torque converter that you have, this, since there is no uh, bolts, it runs like a nut in a bolt. Uh-huh. We would put pins in there. Okay. Or we would put washers for like uh, spacers. Okay. But this just runs this kind of like a bolt that goes in the lathe and it goes in a special keyed spot. And it allows it so I can throw it up there and when I go to cut it, it doesn't move. But I take my shaft and throw it in here. And I'd key it up and then I'd hold this. Lock it in and then kind of a battle of like taking it out when it's broken in half. Oh yeah, because it'd be in two pieces with, with everything inside is loose. Yeah, and so okay. you got to kind of juggle it in your hands like it's something light when it's not. And that's going to split it on that welded seam right there. Yeah, yeah. So I would take my lathe over here and I'd either put it to a pump over cover or a cover over pump, depending on which way the uh, 
the torque converter is made mm -hmm. and I would use this bit or that bit and I'd kind of just go back and forth and whittle it down until it gets to the point where it's about a crack and I'd take my hammer and just kind of tap it a little bit snaps in two snaps in two nice. and then after I'm done with that I'd take it over here and, and throw it down and I'd break it all out uh, okay. apart and all the pieces yeah and get all the pump and get it all laid out and everything and throw it in the good old parts washer oh make it clean make it new and uh yeah so after that so uh, that that is is that heat as well or just spray yeah so it's heated and it's spraying it's got some soap in there and some other stuff okay but so after that's clean i would take the converters back or i would uh take the air and dry them off mm -hmm. you know and i take them back here and i would trim them and okay. so when you cut them open like the pump has like it's all rough because it's not a precision cut and so i would take it to this lathe and i'd i'd trim it so it's flat and bevel it and round it so that way when i go to polish it it runs straight yeah that's like that's like brand new right there yep and then after that put them on here and then they spin freely okay and so you can get them to do that all then right. you're uh pretty much good to take them back over here and we'd like build the torque converters okay and build them up and get them ready to weld and is this where you keep spare parts and you swap things out that are no good and, and inspecting and, and stuff yeah. as you go through okay this is where i build everything okay like the build bench and okay. then I'd, I'd take it over here and if i wanted to weld it i would uh have this and so oh, these that, are that's going to work the same to center it isn't it yeah yeah and this thing actually uh spins you know but so we have these collets and what these collets do is they're the, the right size and the perfect size to hold the hub straight and so when the cover and the pump are able to spin freely, the cover is straight by the pilots, okay. and then the hub is straight by the pilots, and it allows it to when I weld it, they're both lined up. Okay. And so they don't have they can't they could have impure uh, problems with like lathe or like I didn't trim it right or something, but when it goes in here, it'll always go back to straight. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah, so it kind of it self-centers then. It does. Okay. And then it also does, a, it, it'll do a tack, and then it'll do a tack on the other side, and a tack on the other side, and tack on the other side, and then it'll just start welding. Okay. And I choose all these settings and everything, and if you got them good, it welds them good. Good. Yeah, take this off. Put on my welder. And over here we have the balancer, which the balancer is pretty much just a tire machine that's like flipped on its side. Okay. And I'd put the torque converter up here and have the the drive shaft or whoa, not the drive spline door. <laughs> yeah, but I would have this in there and it would keep it all straight and I could see if the whole torque converter is running straight or if it's not. Okay. You know, and I can identify that. Um. Oh, and you, you get the printout tell you what's going on up here, right? Tell you what to put on it. Yep. Okay. And, and so, do you do you weld the uh, the the weights on? Yeah. So I would take these and those. Okay. These weights are like uh, magnets, and so I know how much they weigh. Mm -hmm. Um, you got five, ten, and these are fifteens, and so it'd be thirty. But I would figure out what, how much weight it needed, and then once I have that balanced, I would take like the sharpie and write down how much weight it was. Uh huh. And I'd take it over here and I throw it in the pressure tester and I have all my different weights over here. I got, yeah. Okay. And so I, I weld these on wherever I need to weld them at, wherever it needs the weight at. And I have a bunch of different types of weights. Mm -hmm. And then this is also where I would take my TIG welder and I would fix all the leaks. Okay, the le and, the, and the leaks are from where the initial spot goes on. Yeah, right? like the tacks. The initial tacks, yeah, okay. And, and so then anything like, else that comes up, right? Obviously. Yeah. Okay. Anything else that's leaking or whatever. Okay. Um, but then I would take it and I would just kind of, I put a paper around it, around the hub, 
so I can get it ready to paint, and then I'd paint it. This is what's left of my old converter. Yeah. Right. Well, this is this is a, a bunch of parts. A bunch of parts, but kind of a little bit of this and that. Yeah. And so here, uh, like a, what we do is like like this. If it's all loose, we would either braise it and tighten it up, or we would take like a. Uh, uh, one of these just kind of chisels and it has this kind of flat spot and uh, a groove but we'd put it like right about there and it kind of indents it a little bit and tightens it yep. you, you do it all the way around and it tightens up the whole thing and you just keep banging on until they're tightened up well yeah I mean you have to do all of them before the yeah. whole thing tightens right right makes sense um, but if that didn't work, then I would take our brazing rod and then the TIG and I'd come in here and I'd, I'd braze it. And that would make it so it's heavier duty and it's not going to flex or break or shear or anything like that. Um, but we also, I mean, oil the bearings before we send them out. That way, if anybody doesn't put oil in there, our torque converter stays fine. Oh, um, while the pump is while the transmission pump is filling it and it's spinning, yeah. it'll give it a little bit of lube before it gets, yeah, okay. And so on top of that, it's kind of the same premise as is we'll, we'll oil this stator cap, so that way that is oiled and it doesn't create any problems. Um, and then we'll take the turbine and check the splines, make sure they're all good, because you don't want bad splines. And then I'll see if that kind of, it's running flat. Which it, it mostly is. It's kind of side to side, but once it's connected to the actual... Because yeah, it doesn't have a shaft in there yet, so yeah. it's going to wobble, right? Yeah, so once it's shafted in, it, it won't move. And just got a thrust washer and got the cover. That's, that's... And that's pretty much it. That's all torque converters. All right. Now, the wherever my old one was, this that part was broken off on the end of the... Let me get the names right. The... the uh, turbine. Uh, turbine. This was snapped off. Yeah, yeah. That one, which it was just hanging which I by can, a thread. Which I can show right now. One of the good things, one of the good reasons why you brought your, your torque converter here is because of... So here's the really, really, really good reason why we brought this here to get this done right, because I had no idea this was going to be an issue. This uh, turbine splines just shear. So you found it loose in there when you opened everything up? Yeah, it wasn't even connected. It was just kind of sitting at the bottom. And so all he had to drive was just these little tiny splines that are left. Wow. That are all just wrecked. Wow. Yeah. So it wasn't just the leak. The leak was telling us we had some other things going on here. And that, that's just nuts. But I think you would, I think something like this, when the shaft is wobbling, when the whole thing's wobbling because you don't have a bushing in it, yeah. it's going to, it's going to do bad things. And this is an example of bad things. So, wow, okay. Man, that is really. So the good thing is, yours runs straight as a dime. So it's not gonna wobble or anything like that. It's not gonna create any problems. You yeah. know, as opposed to, maybe this was kind of, wobbly a little bit five years ago or eight years ago when they made it or something and eventually time time tells it, well and again that and the thing that pushing being out that's yeah. just all that pressure on it you know and this thing's full of fluid and you also said you um brised up you ended up brazing up part of that other converter that we're yeah, yeah. getting I which would make your... it sort of a, a half heavy duty right like yeah a, yeah like a half heavy duty because this section here it not only is it tightened by the metal tighten but then it's braised, it can't go anywhere. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's cool. But then it, it was just solid, and I was like, all right, I don't need to braise any more of it. So it's kind of like a, you, we usually would braise like the whole, like multiple different parts of it, you know? Mm -hmm. But I just braised right here, and it, it had that thing solid, because that's all it needed, you know? Perfect, yeah. Good perfect. enough to go off a mountain. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> good enough to go across country at this point. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could daily this thing now. All right.
All right, well, we're going to get this ticket all squared up and then get this thing back home and pop it in. And a big thanks to Porks Torques and uh, Dalton and giving us a tour of this place here and getting us uh, getting us back in business. If you guys need any transmission parts, uh, you need a torque converter, you're in Wasilla or anywhere in Alaska, you need to give these guys a call. So, again, thanks. Let's get this squared up and get this going. Yep. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Well, good morning. <laughs> here we go again. We've been in this spot before, and this is our second bite at the apple. So uh, what we are looking at here is where we were a week and a half ago or so, two weeks ago. I don't know. I lose track of time. When we last put the transmission back in and then it developed the exact same leak as soon as I fired it up. So now we have our not just repaired but fully rebuilt and uh, uh, semi heavy duty torque converter from Porks Torx ready to go back in here and for the next little bit I'm just going to be reversing everything I did the one major thing I did different on this time I pulled it down is I actually did go ahead and remove the starter what's kind of nice about that is when I'm putting the the transmission back in place um, I can kind of go straight to the flex plate up and in because the snout of that starter kind of sticks out and gets in the way. But um, yeah, just going to carefully examine everything I have in here, make sure that everything looks good. Uh, I have some other goodies been boxed up here. You'll be seeing about those shortly as well. So not going to bore you with all the putting it back in unless I find something interesting for you. And otherwise, this one-man band is about to kick off a new set of music for the next little bit. So it is Saturday morning. I've got some issues with my 2008 GMC Sierra. I'm getting some help on redoing the G80 differential in it so I can get the camper back on it. I'm going to take you guys on some awesome Alaskan adventures there. So let's go ahead and get this thing put back together, get my headlight on, and... I'll get back with you when it's complete again. Fall guy. That is just so cool. It's back in. This really looks no different than the last time you saw me under here. When we thought we fixed it the first time, let's shed some light on the subject. Uh, drive shafts in. Speedometer is hooked up. There's a little electrical connector on top of there plugged in. Got my cutoff exhaust hanging here, vacuum line on the transmission, uh, kick down cable, cooler lines, cover on the trans. I probably should have wiped that out a little better because I'm going to see some dripping and the dripping is going to be what was in the pan before I put it back on. Starters on, lines on, shifter cables on. It's in there. 